Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So uh, it's been quite a few, quite a couple of interesting days. Um, I have a few things I want to go over. And um, I did start this live stream uh, about an hour ago and nobody was watching me. So that tells me that my viewers have jobs. So here it is 610 in my time. And now I have some viewers. So thanks for watching. Okay. First thing I want to go over, you know, I cut my finger, got 10 stitches and it hurt. I got four Percocets that night, went to bed at 2 a.m. with one Percocet in me, woke up three hours later with this horrible pain, went to work after three hours of sleep. I got three more Percocets left. Here's how you dispose of them. You go to the pharmacy and you get this for free and you dump it in there. It's this powder and you dump it all in there. Okay. I just dumped it in there. Then you add water. So this is important because you can't just throw this down the toilet. And then you close it up and then you got to shake it for 30 seconds. All right. So that neutralizes the Percocets. They dissolve and it makes it safe to throw away. So there's that. Now you know how to get rid of opioids. Okay. I had to throw that away. All right. I got some things I want to go over. Um, these are some successes and some really cool case histories. Um, and one thing I want to share with you is a goal to be hungry, but not hypoglycemic. And uh, it's almost like a tagline because they both, both words start with the letter H, meaning like there's hungry and hypoglycemic when your blood sugar is crashing and you have this fear of dying or passing out. So, but if you get to the point where you're hungry and you're hungry for three hours, four hours, five hours, and everything is fine, you're still working, your stomach's growling, doesn't matter, and you're not hypoglycemic, because you're eating plenty of fat and protein, that's the human homo sapiens diet. Uh, the sapien diet is a term I picked up from Brian Sanders, and he's got a movie coming out called Food Lies. And I'm a, I'll be interviewed tomorrow for his podcast, so that's really exciting. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanna go over is um, I have a woman, uh, she's been with me for probably 12, 13 years, and when she came in yesterday, She's told me about, I see her rarely, but she came in yesterday and she said, last year she had a moment where suddenly she gained 15 pounds in one month. She got tinnitus in one year and she got a bunch of symptoms that all came very suddenly. And I said, well, what happened at the time? And she said, well, her and her sister visited their, their brother. They drove up Northern Michigan, they visited the brother. And um, it was all stressful because he had a divorce and he's raising a, his daughter and all this stuff. And that's the, that's what caused her weight gain, the stress. And I don't believe it. I don't believe that. And so got to keep asking questions. So I said, did you stay in a moldy hotel? She said, no, the hotel was really nice. It was almost new. And I said, did you have food poisoning? Did you? And when I was doing this, I was, I was doing the muscle testing procedure. I found her thyroid was problematic due to a parasite. I found a parasite in her thyroid. And then that's when she said, oh, yeah, that weekend they, they went to a restaurant and they had scallops and all three of them got sick. OK, but she was blaming the stress. A lot of people blame the stress because it's the biggest problem ever. You know, like my brother got a divorce and everybody's stressed out, but she forgot about the food poisoning. One time I talked to a guy and he had really tight calf pain, uh, calf muscles and Achilles tendon tightness. And it was only on the weekends and he blamed his wife because they would go out and shop and, you know, visit people or whatever. And he's walking around with his wife and all stressed out because of his wife. And I said to him, so what shoes do you wear? And well, during the work week, he's wearing office type shoes. And on the weekends, he wears Birkenstocks, which are backwards shoes. The, the toe of the Birkenstock sandal is higher than the heel. And that stretches out the calf and the Achilles. And so I'm just giving you another example of how stress, you know, is not the issue. It was the guy's shoes or stress is not the issue. It was the woman's scallops that was, you know, poisoning her, her and her siblings. Um, okay. So there's that one. I have a guy, he's got, um, he's on dialysis eight hours every night at home. And his urine output is 800 milliliters. And the goal is 3,500 milliliters. If he gets there, he's off dialysis. 
And so six weeks later, being on the right supplements, his urine output is now 1,700 milliliters. So it's about double, a little bit more than doubled. Will he ever get off dialysis? I hope so. We'll see what happens. But that's a really cool success. Um, I have a woman that uh, she's in her 70s, and she's got arthritis in her hand. She can't close her hands. She can't open them all, all the way either. And so she's been with me a number of months. Six weeks ago, she committed to being carnivore, all carnivore, all meat. And she would do it for like four days in a row. Then she'd have to eat something else, go back to carnivore, which is fantastic. Even though she had to cheat, it's still fine. And um, so now six weeks later, she can do this and she can do this. And she said she's more than 50% better with the arthritis in her hands by going carnivore. So that's awesome. Um, I have a woman who, she's in her 40s. She had an MMR vaccine in January. Right now it's September. It completely ruined her health. One shot, she's going to all these doctors trying to look for answers. They don't have answers, especially because they caused it in the first place with their MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. And uh, one doctor gave her um, antidepressant and it made her worse and she got more symptoms like cold hands, cold feet, tingling, nerve tingling. And so she's telling me about all these symptoms from head to toe. And uh, I said, I get it. You were poisoned. Just like I was poisoned in the moldy office. And I was toxic and had symptoms from head to toe. Anxiety to swollen feet, head to toe. And uh, it's not the brain problem. It's not the foot problem. It's not the heart problem. It's the mold. For her, it's the toxicity of the MMR vaccine. It's that bigger picture. It's a huge holistic picture. So I was like, you got to detox. And um, I was like commiserating with her because I've been there where I have the anxiety and I can't sleep and I can't breathe and it's worse at night and all that stuff. So I've been there. Um, but yeah, so a woman in her 40s getting MMR ruined her health and she's been to 20 doctors. So finally now she's got a, an answer. Um, the next person I want to talk about, actually, this is super interesting. Um, he came in today in this office and um, bones hurt, very painful, like he's walking on stones. I've had that. Now, when I was in my early 30s, I had a scar. I have a scar right here. I talked about this just in one video out of 366 videos. One video I talked about this scar. When I was 14 years old, I had this birthmark removed by a dermatologist who convinced my mom that it might turn into cancer later. So they took out this hunk of flesh and they pulled the skin together. And then when I stood up from the table, I couldn't stand up straight. I was collapsed in at the age of 14. By the time I'm 30, I can't run more than 20, 20 minutes without getting chest pain due to lack of oxygen to the heart or lack of nerve flow to the heart. Anyways, um, one of my symptoms was I'd wake up in the morning and I'd have to gingerly walk very slowly for about three, four or five steps. Then it would loosen up. I'd get my circulation going to my feet and it was all good after that. Or I'd be doing pull-ups at the gym. I couldn't let go and land on my feet from hanging. I had to slowly you know, work my way down from with the steps because my feet would hurt at the very bottom. Well, this guy, that's what this guy has. So he does yoga. He's got to stand on three mats. Anyways, I told him, hey, I think it's your heart. I used to have it. Let me do the muscle testing procedure. Let's find out what's going on. I found mold in his heart. And I found it in the rest of his body. I found it in his ankles and his feet and in his, the rest of his body. So I'm, you know, ending the visit. This is super interesting. And he said, well, he used to be in this building. He had a business in this building right here where we're at now. And uh, but 20 years ago, he moved to the building I just moved out of. He just moved out or he just he's been in this building, this moldy building for 20 years that I just moved out of. And guess when his painful feet started 20 years ago. So I told him, yeah, it's the building. That's where you got the mold. So funny, uh, coincidental, right? Um, but we got solutions and he will get better and it will take a while, but he'll get better. So there's that. I think I got all the notes I went. Oh, um, yeah. Google is effectively censoring health information. So 
as uh, the next civil war starts, <laughs> make sure you eat meat <laughs> and be strong and make sure your, your brain is uh, stable, your thoughts are stable and you can think through analytically and not react, um, overreact due to emotion. Um, and then nutrition is the most basic thing that you can do to control that. And then you got to make sure you kill the mold and detoxify metals and chemicals and make sure your body's clean. Okay. So the title of this is, uh, ask me about protocols and like, what should I do for, and there's a lot of questions here. I'm going to start at the top. What should I do for gum health? Okay. The basic foundation is always the same. And I put this up on the wall here. Let me kind of get in closer with this. Okay. So yeah, the diet's got to be good. You're not eating a bunch of sugar. Sugar erodes all tissues and destroys tissue. And um, so then after that, um, you want to make sure that your um, microbiome is good. So if you find, you can take some broad spectrum antimicrobials if you wanted to, such as oregano, artemisinin, also known as wormwood. And when you open up these herbs, make sure that they smell herbally. They need to smell like a leaf or a root or um, a spice out of the kitchen. Usually the herbs are brown or some, you know, it's, a, it's not white. Herbs are not white. They're brown or yellow or tan or, you know, some are darker black. Some are, you know, or it's rare, but it's orange. But if you have a, if you buy a supplement from Costco or um, Target and you open up this herb and it's white and it doesn't smell like anything, it's garbage. It's got to it's got to be present in that bottle. It's, it's got to have its own characteristics and personality. And when you take it in your mouth, you're taking in that those characteristics. So for gum health, uh, from bio, uh, from standard process, uh, BioDent is a really good one. And then Revitin toothpaste is awesome for the gums. And then don't brush so hard. You can brush away your gums with a toothbrush for all your life, which is basically kind of what I did down here. And then there's a really soft, almost a plastic bristle toothbrush. And I forgot the name of it. And that's what I use. You order it on Amazon. And so it's a plastic. It's very, very soft. It, so when you combine that toothbrush with Revitin, you're just getting the toothpaste on your on your teeth. You don't have to scrub it away. The toothpaste does the scrubbing. All right. Is there a health risk to having an exposed metal post from a lost crown? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you you don't want to get bacteria in there, that's the only thing that I can say about that. I don't have. I'm not a dentist. I don't have much experience with that. Um, but make sure that your oral health is extremely health, extremely high. There were studies done back in the 50s where they gave dogs IV sugar right into their legs and they got tooth decay. So it's not about getting sugar on your teeth. It's about getting sugar in your blood, suppressing your immune system, and then altering the oral microbiome. And that's how you get cavities and erode your teeth and your gums. And you want to normalize this microbiome by eating the right diet. Okay which they do for athlete's foot. So um, if there's any sort of fungus anywhere else in your body, you want to make sure you wipe that out. So um, you can have athlete's foot only on the feet, but you can have systemic yeast, including in your intestines, or maybe like a groin skin rash or some, you know, somewhere else that you can have a fungal rash anywhere. So you want to do the antifungal, <coughs> excuse me, antifungal diet, just Google antifungal diet. And then go after antimicrobials anytime. So like this advice is general advice for anybody that has athlete's foot or tooth decay, gum decay or whatever. I can't address uh, directly address your situation because I've never taken your history. I've never done the muscle testing or exam on you. I've never talked to you. So these are just, these are just general protocols. Um, so and I might be co completely missing the point. So, um, you know, there's a lot, I've seen a number of people in the last few weeks who have chest pain because they have a parasite in their chest and it's pushing on their heart or it's occluding some sort of function in this area. And they also maybe have some lymphatic congestion in, your, in their armpits. So um, there are general rules of thumb and those are what I'm giving you now is the general rules of thumb. Okay, now regarding athlete's foot, you, another thing you could do is topical tea tree oil 
and there's a lot of different sort of essential oils you can try. And also um, foot baths, ionic foot baths, they work. And uh, if you find somebody near you, some maybe at a chiropractor's office or a health food store, uh, there's chances are you're gonna you might find somebody who has that ionic foot bath, and they'll charge let's say thirty bucks for thirty minutes or something like that. So you do that six times or twelve times or something to help topically, and it'll pull garbage out of the out of the feet. And why why is it that the foot bath is important as opposed to doing a hand bath or an elbow bath? The reason why the foot bath is important is because the skin on the bottom of the feet is kind of like this skin. So there's more ability to sweat and cleanse. Actually, it's like 10 times more able to cleanse at the bottom of the feet than it is in the armpit. So that's why a foot bath is awesome. Okay. Um, and I got a story. There's a chiropractor in California. I'm not going to say any names, but he's got a, he basically has a cancer clinic and he, he's under the radar. He doesn't do very much advertising um, because he doesn't want to be in trouble. But he runs a foot bath. He had this big room in his office. And he had like 10 or 12 chairs and people, you know, there's a bunch of people sitting in these chairs getting foot baths. So I walk in this room and there's two people. I had chatted with both of them earlier. And now they're getting their foot bath treatment. And the one guy to the right of me had cancer. And his foot bath water was black as death. It's like black like this. It was horrible looking. The guy to, my, to the left of me, his foot bath was orange. And I made a joke and he was probably in his late forties and he was overweight. He didn't have cancer, but he just liked to go to this clinic and get um, an, um, sort of like an up, update his health, if you will. So I made a joke to the guy with the orange water. And I said, you like to, you like to drink orange juice, don't you? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I said, you like to drink carrot juice, don't you? And he goes, oh yeah, I love carrot juice. I work on or an organic carrot farm and we bottle carrot juice and I drink it and just, coats down my esophagus and I just love it. I drink it all the time. So anyways, he's detoxing beta carotene or carrot juice or whatever. <laughs> so, but he was relatively healthy. He just had a bad diet. He had a lot of junk food. He needed to lose weight. He needed to go into ketosis is what he needed to do. Okay. You did a video on artemisin for thyroid issues and there is more than one complex sold by standard process that is artemisin wormwood. I recommend the artemisin in for that thyroid issue. Um, also, I bought a bottle of the Wormwood and it says to take a break five or 10 days, I believe, and then restart it. Is that something you recommend for taking the complex or just continue it? Yeah, when you have parasites that are laying eggs, such as worms, whether it's thread worms or round worms, hook worms, tapeworms, you wanna do five days, of a five day break. So 10 days on, five days off, 10 days on, five days off. And the reason why is because you're gonna kill the parasites for 10 days and then the main worm, the mother worm that you just killed, they release an enzyme that prevents eggs from hatching. So when you kill that main worm in the first 10 days, it comes out and it stops making that enzyme and then the eggs start to hatch. So then you go back on the wormwood for 10 days to kill those new baby worms. So you cycle that for at least three months, minimum more like six months. So, um, but I do have a number of people, especially for the autoimmune thyroid. Um, I just have them take artemisin every single day and we get good results. Same thing with para one and para two from cell core biosciences. It's every day. I don't, I don't cycle with those. So the full moon is coming up in two days. I just talked to a guy today and uh, we're killing parasites. He has chest pain. It's much better. It's 30 to 40% better in six weeks or eight weeks, somewhere in there. Anyways, he said he had this horrible flare up on August 14th and 15th, and he almost went to the ER. And so I just, I'm talking to him, this is today. I'm talking to him, I Google the full moon calendar and sure enough, the full moon was uh, August 14th. So I said, that's why he had the flare up. Anyways, um, interesting. You know, and so let me explain that a little bit further. The moon shifts the oceans, the tides go in and out because of the moon location and position relative to the earth. It's affecting your brain water. <laughs> it's shifting your brain water, your body water, and the parasites are also being affected by the cycles of the, of the moon. All right, is there anything you can quickly, any, is there anything that can quickly rid of memory issues and guaranteed? Um, no and no. 
Um, please and thank you. Sorry, it's a bad answer, but that's the answer. I need to know what to do for depression. Um, so when you talk about depression and fatigue and these uh, sort of like full body, full it, ambiguous, I'm going to use the word ambiguous uh, diagnosis or symptom, you got to find out what's the cause. Okay. And then, so I have this, you know, you can buy this poster from me. You know, I made this with my graphic uh, designer. It took us six months to figure this out. It took me my whole career, my lifetime to figure this out. But then the design of it took six months. So we made um, sheets that are about this big. And then I think we're charging 20 or 25 bucks for it. That includes postage. So just you can just email the office and then we can and with payment. And then um, but anyways, we can send that to you. But this is your guide for depression. And so is it a toxin? Are you toxic? What's your history? Did you work in a foundry? Did you work in a car wash for 20 years? I had a guy who um, super depressed, all kinds of problems. And on his intake form, his employment was technician. So I'm doing the muscle testing procedure. I find lead and I find car exhaust. And I said, what do you mean a technician? Oh, I repair machines. Okay, great. Where? Car washes. So he sits, he's in a car wash all day repairing the machines as cars are going by very slowly with her engines on. That's been 20 years of him inhaling exhaust and that's why he was sick. So um, there's my answer for depression. Make sure you eat plenty of meat. Okay. Hi. What's the best diet for gout? Um, the best diet for gout is low carb, um, minimizing the plants. And um, the cause of gout is kidney dysfunction and inflammation. And so I have supplements to clean out the kidneys. I did a whole video about that. Just search my name on YouTube and gout. And then the low carb diet is a low inflammatory diet. Now you can have normal uric acid that's typically tagged to gout, high uric acid, but you can have normal uric acid and still have gout. Okay, so it's not really correlating as well as we thought it would. So um, the supplements that I talk about are AC carbamide, Kader, Arginex. Um, there's several others, but those are the three main ones. Um, if, D, if natural products are effective in treating diseases, hospitals do not use them in their patients and choose to treat the patient with medications that damage, that damage other organs in the body. That's correct. Is a keto diet safe for autoimmune hepatitis? Yeah, I would say, yeah, for sure. It's probably the best diet for, for any kind of autoimmune. And well, it is liver hepatitis. So liver inflammation, um, high ALT, high AST and a lab test hepatitis. Uh, that's something where you should really test it out. And like get your ALT, AST tested like once a month as you're changing your diet and just watch those numbers and see if those numbers are going down or going up. So instead of me saying, yeah, absolutely, you should test it. I'm talking to um, uh, Catherine Bibu. Okay. Um, my wife gets migraines every other menstrual cycle and started with our second child. So that means that one ovary is okay and the other one's not. That's what that means. Um, taken chrysin before, but looking for something else. Maybe it's just more red meat a week prior to cycle suggestions. Well, this is where I would jump in on uh, supplements to feed the ovary. You can get ovary supplements like standard process as Ovex. Probably find it on Amazon. Um, and then there's uh, herbs that are fantastic for women's cycles and ovary health. Um, Chase tree would be the next one. Chase tree is fantastic for that. And then low carb, low inflammatory diet. And then look out for cysts and like, um, you know, fibroids. And then the ketogenic diet reduces and eliminates cysts and fibroids. So ketosis, low carb for your wife, for sure. What to do for heart palpitations? I'm already keto. All right. So what is in your body that's causing heart palpitations? Um, maybe it's mold. Maybe it's um, toxicity. Um, maybe it's thyroid, autoimmune thyroid. Um, you got to do some lab work to figure that out. If you want my help, uh, you can contact me or maybe you have a holistic doctor where you live. So I'm talking to LG about the heart palpitations. Now think of it this way. This is super interesting. I've talked about in my videos that the biggest organ in your body is the muscles. 
And when you have dirty blood or hypoxic blood, it's the muscles that suffer first and you get muscle symptoms first, fatigue, exhaustion, heavy body, uh, cramping, fibromyalgia, angina. Okay, but of all the muscle tissue, what is the one part that is most negatively affected? And that's the heart because the heart always is beating. It can't take a break. So I can stand here like this and my bicep is completely relaxed. I can do this for 60 seconds. But if I have my heart completely relaxed for 60, relaxed for 60 seconds, I'm dead. So anyways, it's very sensitive. And that's why I have that HSR heart sound recorder machine here in the office. So I can determine um, like how the heart is functioning in relationship to nutritional deficiencies. And we can find those deficiencies and fix them. But that's an interesting, the heart palpitations brings up an interesting subject of, you know, if you fix the heart and you feed the heart well, a lot of other things get better. And the heart is muscle and it's nervous system, it's connective tissue, and um, it's uh, sensitive, very sensitive to hormones. Okay. Um, is it healthy to eat whole boiled egg a day, shell too? Yeah, I guess if you want to eat the shells. What to do with chronic eyelid dermatitis? That's annoying. It's so, dermatitis is just, it's nasty. And especially, well, acute is even worse than chronic. But what's causing it? You got to really figure out your diet with this one. So this is where you do what's called the elimination diet. So let's say you're eating a wide variety of foods. Okay, bring it down to just a few foods. Like, let's say chicken and salad. Okay, now you've eliminated a whole bunch of other foods. How's your eye? Okay, now if it's not any better, eliminate the salad. Now you're just eating chicken. And if your eye gets better, you know it's a plant in the salad that's caused the dermatitis. Okay, so let's say now you're just eating chicken, no salad, and you bring in cheese, and it comes back. Now you know that cheese is also a problem. Okay, so... You can, cut, you can get your diet down to the foods that are not causing it. Now, having said that, chances are you have some sort of dysfunction in the organs of your body, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, small intestine, stomach, pituitary, something like that. And that's where a good holistic doctor comes in to figure that out. Okay. Um, I don't have an answer for spina bifida. Uh, still dizzy when getting up too quick. Advice? Advice? Um, that's adrenals typically, but a bigger picture, I think a lot of people are misdiagnosed. They're called adrenal fatigue, but it's not. Um, it's more like a, a bigger issue with the whole endocrine system and what's behind the whole endocrine system being tired. Again, you got to find the causes. What's in, you know, is it toxins, pathogens? Could be excess sugar, could be your diet. Um, and then if you, you probably maybe already feeding your adrenals, that's this the last circle. And if you're feeding your adrenals, but you're not any better, I got a friend, he's in Rochester, Minnesota. He's a chiropractor and um, he had adrenal fatigue for like a long time. People kept telling him it's adrenal fatigue. He read a bunch of books on it. He became an expert regarding supplements for adrenal fatigue. And, 20, and, and in the meantime, he bought a health food store and people were coming to him talking about adrenal fatigue, asking questions. He never fixed his adrenal fatigue despite being an expert in it until he started detoxing 20 years later. And the supplement that he took was parotid PMG from Standard Process. That's the one supplement. And having said that, let me give you another story related to that product. Um, I see some severely autistic kids that were damaged by vaccines. And uh, parotid PMG seems to be a good one for uh, calming down uh, somebody who's uh, having trouble like anxiety or um, tense, if you will. So anyways, um, there's a relationship with the product glands here and the supplement fixes the product glands. And this has to do with detoxification and control of the thyroid and of course salivation. I don't want to get too much into it, but you can Google this product PMG and see what's up with that. So thanks for asking the question. Um, what should I do for persistent styes recurring in my eyes? You have to address that like it's a bacteria, uh, bacterium. So congeplex from standard process. Congeplex for congestion. The sty is a little bit of congestion. So make sure your diet is completely clean so you're not feeding any bugs. All bugs love two things, sugar and dairy. Butter is usually okay, but when I talk about dairy, it's cheese and 
milk and kefir and yogurt and cottage cheese. Okay, so all bugs, virus, bacteria, fungus, parasites, and everything else. Um, what should I do for metal cavity filling toxicity? They get that filling out and you got to go to a correct dentist who knows what they're doing, iaomt.org. And um, you can find a dentist there. And then I got two companies I like to use for detoxing heavy metals. One is Cell Core Biosciences. The other one is uh, Systemic Formulas. So I'm going to leave it there. I got two videos on this. One is called uh, Detox Your Brain. The other one is called New Advancements in Detoxification. Okay. What is your protocol and supplements for SIBO? Um, uh, I do the muscle testing procedure to find out what people need. So you might need some L-glutamine to repair the intestinal lining. You might need some berberine to kill organisms. You might need some enzymes to clean out that biofilm that the organisms live in. Uh, SIBO stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. CFO is small intestinal fungal overgrowth, which is, which is probably a much bigger problem. But the whole medical profession pretty much ignores uh, CFO and fungus. So it depends. That's my answer to that question is it depends. Okay. Do you recommend any diet for this thing jumps around? So I kind of lose my track here. Um, let's see here. Dr. Pomp talks about true cellular detox. Yeah, that's the program that I, one of the programs I like to use. I think you follow him as well. I've been to many of his seminars. Yeah. He mentioned it's, it takes years to get the toxins out of the brain. That's a true statement. What do you recommend to detox on this level? Well, the true side of the detox program has phase three. It's one, you know, prep body brain. So the brain phase, you do that like six months on, take a couple months off and get back on it again. Okay. Um, God, this thing jumps. Um, I got to go backwards. Okay. Now I'm all the way down at the bottom. What is the number one biofilm dissolver that you recommend I have bowel films from Lyme and Glabretta fungus. I also get odd bacterial infections that are hard to diagnose and hard to treat. Um, so there's a lumbrokinase, there's natokinase, and uh, there's a product that I use called Interphase, I-N-T-E-R-F-A-S-E. -E. So those are the, those are, would be the top ones. Okay. Polycystic kidney disease, um, ketosis. You want to try to shrink those uh, cysts as much as you can, and that's the ketogenic diet. Carbs are always recommended when trying to gain muscle mass. Can one gain muscle mass on a keto diet and with fasting? Yes, you can. So carbs will fill you up with water, and it can fill your muscles up with, with water. Look at like the bodybuilders on stage. Compare them with power lifters. So the, the bodybuilders are like pumped up, and the power lifters are tremendously stronger, and their muscles are flat. So yeah, carbs can make you bulk up, but that's kind of fake. And then um, I personally weigh more. So when trying to gain muscle mass, uh, one, can one gain muscle mass on a keto diet? Yes, I weigh more now than ever in my life. And I've been carnivore for a year. Yesterday I had lunch. That was it. I had no breakfast, no dinner. This morning I had no breakfast. So I did, I did a 24-hour fast unintentionally. Um, because the previous, because my lunch yesterday was just so meaty and awesome. It was just over a pound of meat. Um, so I go to the gym at least twice a week and I'm there for an hour. And uh, so I'm putting on muscle and it's good. So yeah, you can gain weight and muscle keto and with intermittent fasting. So one, one other thing I wanna say is a trick that some uh, lifters are doing now is they'll fast for five days and they're starving down their body. And then they come out of the fast and they, and they work out like, a, and they put on more muscle than ever before because the body is realizing, oh my gosh, it's time for a famine. So let's starve down, but we gotta be prepared for the next hunt. So we're gonna uh, increase the muscle mass when we can, we're gonna increase uh, nerve uh, conductivity and reflexes for the hunt. Right. So that's a trick that you could do if you want to do like a five day fast and then hit it hard with lots of calories and muscle and uh, lifting to gain muscle that way. OK, um, Lexi, Abby, my blood pressure typically runs between 100 and 110. 
but it was 88 over 64. I was so weak, went back to 98 over 68 next day. Now normal, but dips low. So your blood pressure is low and it dips low. That's no good. There's a, there's some supplements for that. And this is something you should really pay attention to and make sure you're eating plenty of meat. Um, don't, don't skip on the meat for this situation. You want to keep your blood pressure up. And so the uh, Vasculin from Standard Process and Cataplex B from Standard Process. Vasculin number one, Cataplex B number two, number three would be organically bound minerals. Eh, that's a little iffy. Let me take the organically bound minerals off. It's, it's Vasculin and Cataplex B. Lexi. All right. And if you have any questions, if you want to be a patient, you got to call the office or email the office. I started my keto diet 12 days ago. Do you coach keto people? Yes, I do. Um, Epstein Barr. So Epstein Barr is a virus. It's a it's in a classification of viruses that or viri that stay in your body for a long period of time, and they cause havoc for decades. So Epstein Barr cytomegalovirus, and there's a few others, as opposed to Ebola, which will kill you in four months or um, the flu virus, which will be in your body for three days and or five days. Okay, so Epstein-Barr, it just causes agony for decades. So you treat this like any other virus. So you gotta do the antiviral diet, which is low arginine, high lysine. Just search antiviral. On YouTube, I have a video about the antiviral diet. So search my name and antiviral diet on YouTube. And then you take lysine and you take supplements that kill a virus. And I got some favorites. Standard process is Immuplex, um, Cerutoplus. Calcium lactate is good for a virus. And then MediHerb, uh, which is distributed by Standard Process. They have Vironon. Okay. Uh, need a good gallbladder big stones protocol with great diet step-by-step, -step, please. That's a tough question. Um, so what's, there's a, fast food is a supplement from standard process that can break up stones, but they, but not really big stones. It's gotta be many small stones. Um, and then Ch Chantra Pidanka, um, just search like stone breaker herb, uh, Chanka Pidanka, I forgot how you, how you say it, but uh, you can just search stone breaker herb, you'll find it. So here's the deal with gallstones. I've had um, about four people in my whole career that I couldn't help them with their gallstones. And they ended up needing surgery to get their gallbladder out. And all of them had, you know, big stones. And the one woman, this is back in 03, 04, um, she got the surgery done. The husband's waiting in the lobby. The surgeon comes out. And uh, he just got out of surgery and the surgeon was ghost white because the stone was so large and he was afraid that she was going to die on the table. So we tried for, you know, she had tried with other chiropractors before me for a while. And then she tried with me for like six months or a year. And, um, you know, I had said to her, hey, look, you can't not consider the surgery because you've been doing this for so, so long. So anyways, it's good that she got that out. What caused it in the first place? There are some people who are stone formers. They, they form stones. That's their DNA. And their dad does it and their brother does it. And they get a stone every year. So you got to be extra careful. Don't eat oxalates. You got to do a low oxalate diet. And you um, take fast food or this stone breaker herb and uh, do... Um, yeah, it's mostly avoiding bad plants and sugars. You're eating a low insulin, low inflammatory, uh, low carb diet. Okay, regardless of, here we go. Um, oh no, that's not it, okay. <clears throat> All right, is, carniv is carnivore good? Okay, so what is what to do for candida? Is carnivore good or is it better to include antimicrobials? Well, yeah, you always want to do antimicrobial. So you, when you do an anti-candida diet, you're not killing the fungus. You're just not feeding it. So you want to starve it, and then you got to kill it with the antimicrobial. So do both. <clears throat> I have tinnitus followed by ear infection and taking medication, how to reverse it. Well, you're lucky if the tinnitus is caused by 
an infection because then you can, you have a better chance of getting rid of it and fixing it. So that's where you put drops in your ears, like um, herbal drops to clean it out and get that. You got to kill that bug that's in your ears. <clears throat> I don't have a particular suggestion for you on what type. When I see people in the office, I do muscle testing or I recommend based on your history, if you would do antifungal, antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral. Okay. Chronically underweight and pain when eating too much fat. Do you recommend taking bile salts for fat absorption? Jacinta, yeah, for sure. Bile salts and ox bile. Those are two different products and you can buy either one and you, you, should, try, you should buy both and uh, take them both at the same time. See how it goes. Hopefully it works. And then later you can experiment with just one. Later experiment with the other. And maybe you just need one and not the other. So that's a good way to go about that. Free healthcare at nutritionfacts.org. Health is power. Oh, man. Um, yeah, you know, Green Smoothie Party. Um, here you are on my live feed talking about the quackery at nutritionfacts.org. I'm sorry. Um, so Dr. Gregor just posted a video about why um, ketosis is bad and how it kills and how it's, you know, damages your heart and all this stuff. And I, I, I posted a comment. I haven't posted on a vegan YouTube channel in probably two years, but I posted yesterday on this, on his channel. And, um, he talked about ketosis and he mentioned, um, heart and how these epidemiological studies show that a high fat diet is bad and ketosis is bad, but it's epidemiology is total garbage. And he, he cited seven epidemiological studies. And then he also cited uh, research on how, um, oh man, I can't remember, but there's al it's always the same arguments. Like there's potentially some metabolites that end up in the body and it may cause harm. One of them being TMAO. Well, that's been thoroughly debunked. Your body just handles these metabolites. Not a big deal. Another one is called AGEs advanced glycation endpoints. So you grill meat on the grill. There's a little black part that's charred. There's AGEs in there and your body just deals with it, right? It doesn't like get cancer because you ate some charred meat, but there's actually more AGEs in plants than there is in meat. So if you want to argue that, then don't eat any plants. Um, so um, with the, let me just state one more thing um, with the vegan uh, agenda. In 2017, that's when I really I posted some things about veganism and Dr. Greger, and I got attacked for the whole year on my YouTube channel. And it was quite the year. I learned a lot. And I I didn't just I, I blocked most people, but at first I like engaged with them to find out why they're saying those things. And I traced it back to Dr. Greger and, and Caldwell Esselstyn and McDougal. And I saw their research. I started watching their videos. And over the course of the year, I figured out everything and why they say the things they say and how they misinterpret the research and how they're using the wrong research. They're coming to the wrong conclusions. And it's like every single sentence is wrong, every single sentence. So when I, and I have multiple videos where I debunk um, uh, plant-based news or Mike the, Mike the vegan. And I, I let them talk for a sentence or two, then I have to hit pause and I say why it's wrong. And then I hit play and I let them talk for another sentence or two, then I do it again. So it's kind of like a big thorn in the side of all of America is the vegan agenda because they're the ones that started the USDA to recommend a low fat diet in 1980. It was a vegan, I forgot his name, it was 1978, 1979. He's talking to the USDA and he says, what do we got to lose? We got all these people dying from heart disease. Obviously it's from fat. We don't have really good clinical studies to back it up, but we got a lot of epidemiology. So that's when they started to recommend the low fat diet. And it's been a complete disaster ever since. So um, I blame the vegan agenda on the deaths of tens of millions of tens of millions of Americans, premature death, bankrupting um, companies and individuals. You know, the number one um, cause of bankruptcy, even during the housing crisis of 2008 was medical bills. So there's all that just it's a complete disaster. And when you exclude the ridiculous um, 
studies and you go with the real science, low carb beats low fat, 115 to zero. And I'm not making that up. Okay. Um, I appreciate you and your work. Oh, thanks. I have peripheral artery disease. Yeah, same thing with that regarding any sort of circulatory problem. Um, you want to make sure that you're detoxed and um, how do you open up your arteries? So I talk, that's more about lactic acidosis too. And um, I have plenty of videos on that. What else do you want me to say about peripheral artery disease? Okay. So cat uh, cataplex E2 from standard process can increase the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Um, ginkgo forte from MediHerb, any kind of ginkgo, but it's got to be really good quality. The best quality is MediHerb. And that can increase the microcirculation uh, capability by taking the red blood cells and folding them in half so they can get through the capillaries. Bilberry, um, especially from MediHerb, is really good for microcirculation. So there's a deal with peripheral artery disease. Um, but it all comes down to diet. And, you know, I have two guys. They both had swollen ankles, like a heart disease symptom of swollen feet, swollen ankles. And they're both 100% better. One guy took a year. The other guy took nine months. The carnivore diet is the one that did it. Better than the ketogenic diet. The carnivore diet is better than the ketogenic diet. In my experience, um, in fixing the congestive heart failure symptom of swollen ankles and swollen legs. Um, okay, I already talked about kidney disease, kidney function as earlier. So you can go back, preach it. <laughs> you are so smart. Thanks, Freja. You know, I don't have kids and I go home and I study and my girlfriend lives four hours that way. I see her like two times a month. And so I love to study. And I, when I was a kid, I would come home, I was eating the standard American diet in grade school. I'd come home, I'd be swinging my elbows to get to the kitchen, get out of my way. I, I'm hungry. I'm going to kill you. Give me food. I was hypoglycemic, but that didn't happen on the day that time magazine or discover magazine was in the mailbox. We're talking in the 1980s, which is the height of the magazine era. Or we also had Newsweek, but um, Time or Discover, I would grab that magazine, sit down and read it for from cover to cover. Every single word, it would take me an hour. And I realized I'm not eating food. I would, pref I would rather eat, I'd rather read than eat food. So that was just a realization I had when I was younger. But thanks for the, um, the compliment. Um, low ferritin levels, even when, after trying to eat more meat. Good question, Sophia Rose. I have a patient, he was taking an iron pill from the medical doctor for a year. It did not improve his anemia lab work. And then I put him on ferro food from standard process. And within three months, it was completely normal. When you look at ferro food, Google this or find it on Amazon and read the proprietary blend and see all the ingredients in there, all the foods, all the animal parts, all the plants. It's not just iron. So you're taking in the iron. And it's a small dose of iron too. Like one capsule is like 60% of the RDA. But it's all the other things that are in the pill that make your body absorb it and utilize it. So a ferro food from standard process. Any recommendations for genital warts? So you want to kill it. You can like get it burnt off or at the dermatologist or frozen. Um, or you could possibly go to a pharmacy and get the salicylic acid compound W. And you put it on the skin and then you, you know, then you kill it off, right? Then, then you got to really kill it off after that by using castor oil. So you can get castor oil online or at the pharmacy and you put it on there and, and then you cover it in plastic, like saran wrap. And you got to keep it completely um, anoxic, no oxygen, no air. You're going to, you're going to starve that area of oxygen. Um, let's say like 24 hours a day for five day to seven days. Okay. Now you're going to change it. Of course, you, it'll, you know, you, you, you're not going to go overboard with this, but you're going to clean it up sometimes. And uh, then you put the castor oil back on and you cover it with plastic. So that's how you really get rid of any kind of wart. You can't just like burn it or freeze it. Then you got to, you know, then you're going to poison it with castor oil and heal that area at the same time. I've never told that protocol to anybody, but so there you go. There you have it. Okay. Um, so how about colon cancer? Oh, wait, are there any supplements that will dissolve plaque cholesterol from the arteries? Yeah. 
vitamin K and there's a product called concentrated K and the word concentrated begins with the letter K from a guy named Patrick the Theot. His last name is T H E U T, I think. And he made this concentrated K supplement. His CAC, I'm sorry, his um, um his arterial disease number was a thousand on the coronary artery calcium score. He brought it down to zero with this with his protocol. Also, you want to do low carb keto and carnivore for the plaquing and cholesterol. And my most Viral video is all about plaquing and cholesterol. So search my name, find my channel, and find the one where I talk about how to open up, how to unclog cholesterol plaque arteries. Okay, how about colon cancer? So Gene Rosen, colon cancer. You wanna get the book called How to Starve Cancer by Jane McLelland. And this is, I have this on my wall. And this is called the Metro Map. And she, here she's talking about the three ways that cancer feeds. It feeds off of sugar, glucose, glutamine, which is protein, and fatty acids, which is fat. So the three macronutrients. And um, all these, bar, the colored bars are, are um, therapies that block that particular uh, metabolic pathway that feeds the cancer. So um, what you do, and, and the book explains it really well, is you go on PubMed and you search colon cancer plus, and you type in the therapy or you type in the metabolic pathway that feeds the cancer and you come up with a protocol. So find Jane McLelland on um, Facebook. Her Facebook page is off label drugs for cancer. Jane McLelland. Okay. Several people mailed me that I asked from pseudoparatism. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, that's a scam. Try something vegetarian is a scam comment. Let me delete that. Can I delete that? I'm removing it. Okay. Have you seen the Game Changers movie? No, I have not. Um, I have some, I've heard some people talk about it. I think the one person debunking that more than anybody else is Chris Kruger, last name K-R-U-G-E-R. -E he's got a YouTube channel and he's into athleticism and keto and carnivore. And so he's been studying the people that are in the Game Changers movie. And they've been filming this for years. And the vegans keep dropping out. Tim Sheaf is one of them. He was one of the American, American Ninja Warriors champions. And he's no longer vegan. And there's just a bunch of vegans that they're calling up the producer saying, hey, look, I'm not a vegan anymore because I was dying from it. And then a bunch of the athletes actually are uh, out of commission because of injury. Because their tissues are soft. They're, you know breaking their tendons and ligaments and stuff like that. So, and I just don't get Arnold Schwarzenegger. Never in his life was he a vegan. Now he's being featured in this movie. Give me a break. He needs to move out of California and go back to Europe where he can eat some meat. <laughs> uh, how do you lower? Okay, this just jumped again. Um, this comment's in Russian. I can't read Russian. We are 12 key tests for optimal. What are, any suggestions for heart failure? I just started listening, heart failure. Um, yeah, keto carnivore. Um, do you, here's a, here's a question. Do you, did you know centipedes procreate in the human intestine? Uh, no, but I've had patients eliminate parasites and it actually was, um, a six legged crustacean type insect sitting on the poop on the, in the toilet water. I've had people eliminate organisms that look like jellyfish swimming, still alive, swimming in the, in the toilet water. So there could be any number of organisms living in our bodies. That's one of the things about being on planet earth. Uh, what causes black tongue? What to do about it? Do you smoke cigarettes? You gotta stop that. It could be fungus, it could be black fungus sitting on your tongue. Um, why did you skip over my hypercortisolism question like nine times? <laughs> Sorry, Quasar Kin. Because uh, I keep saying this thing keeps jumping up and down, so I lose track of my visual on the questions. I can't go from question to question. So hypercortisolism, meaning like Addison's disease? Is that what we're talking about? So if you were born with that, it's a genetic thing. I don't have any solutions for it. But if you're completely stressed out and you have high cortisol, 
there's a, so there's a saliva test you can do and you take it in the morning, uh, noon, after afternoon, dinner time, evening. And there should be a pattern of the cortisol where it goes up and then it goes down. And if it's too high in the evening, then you can't sleep. And if it's too low in the morning, then you're, then you're tired. So anyway, so if it's too high, that's hypercortisolism. And um, so what do you do about that? Well, you fix the adrenals. And so again, the question is what's causing the adrenals to not do so well. And I wish I had like an exact answer, but I don't, nobody does. People will tell you they do and they'll start naming off supplements and, and all that. But what's your diet like? Are you eating sugar? Do carnivore, keto, keto carnivore, and um, look for toxicity. You can have, when I had black mold in my body in 2016, my adrenals were shot. And I took adrenal tests. I did at-home adrenal testing, and it was just a, it was a total mess. So, you know, and I took adrenal supplements, but it didn't help because I needed to get to the cause of the mold. So, um what else can I say about that? Okay, let's say you fix the mold or you fix the toxicity. I mean, maybe you got mercury fillings causing toxicity to your adrenals. So then what do you do after that? If you want to feed your adrenals, take Drenamin from Standard Process. There's a million supplements on Amazon all about adrenal health or adrenal support. So you can try those. If they don't work, then you're missing something. You're missing something from this list right here. If you want to see this in better detail, go to my office website which is www.thenhcaa.com, which stands for the Nutritional Healing Center Ann Arbor. Okay. All right. Hey, doctor, how are you? I'm doing good. It was a very interesting week. I had some great cases. A lot of people are getting well. And I started my video off with some of those cases of uh, improvement. So thanks for asking. All right. You're welcome. Quasar kin. Vitiligo and autoimmune diseases. Vitiligo is tough. You know, your skin is a color and then the skin patches start to turn whiter and you get more and more white spots. Um, so I've never even tried to fix that. Never in my career. I was told once that it's um, a virus, but I don't have an answer for you on vitiligo. Okay. All right. Um, breast cysts. Yeah. Ketosis to get rid of breast cysts and also stop drinking coffee. And then a supplement would be synthetic vitamin E, meaning D alpha tocopherol. So you get that at any health food store, any grocery store, any big box store, synthetic vitamin E, stop coffee, get into ketosis for breast cysts. What I think about eating raw meat, I don't, I, I do have some like uh, sushi, okay, but um, some of the salamis or whatever I get from, uh, or like lean cuts of, what do you call that, steak tartare. I'll get that at the grocery store and I'll eat that. And then there's a, gro there's a fantastic restaurant in Ann Arbor called Palm Palace. And they have um, kibi nai, I didn't say that right, kibi nai, but it's raw lamb. And it's the best. I, that's my favorite dish, period. So, yeah, um, I was given yellow fever vaccine two years ago. How to detox from that? Well, the detox from anything, it's all the same, like a detox program. And you start the program and it gets rid of a bunch of toxins. So you're not really trying to target like a toxin. You're getting a lot, get, getting rid of a lot of toxins. So I talked about that earlier in my video. Um, any advice on exercise induced rhinitis? When I start running in the gym, my nose starts to run. No, I don't have any advice on that. Um, no, you don't get rhinitis at any other time. Okay. Here's a, here's a Stokes Sasquatch is talking about pure gum spirit of turpentine for intestinal parasites. Yeah, that's an interesting subject. And, um, I don't sell it. I'm not against somebody trying it, but Google how to do it. Like you have these sugar cubes, three of them stacked up. You pour that turpentine, the, the spirits of turpentine over the sugar cubes. Then you, then you take them. So the parasites love the sugar 
and they get the turpentine at the same time. That's how that works. And it might be really good for fungus too, because these organisms love sugar. Um, should ox bile be taken after gallbladder removal? Yes. And uh, not everybody really benefits from it. Not everybody needs support after gallbladder removal, but I've had people where their life was completely improved for the better after taking ox bile. Questions, how to treat or cure erythromelagia, hot hands and feet. And I also have Raynaud's, no circulation. So you get hot hands and feet and you get cold hands and feet. Um, I don't know. That's a, I would love to test you. If you come to Ann Arbor and be a patient, I would muscle test you and I'd be looking for toxicity and pathogens like a virus or something, something related to circulation, heart, muscle function, lactic acidosis. I don't have a good answer for that right off the top of my head. Is there a way to treat lichen sclerosis without a steroid? So Sovereign silver is a good thing to, to try. I had a woman, she got rid of her lichen sclerosis with um, iodine, high dose iodine. I don't see it that often. And for her, it took, she's also had on some medication, so that complicated the case. It took like two years, but iodine is antimicrobial. Um, but there's a lot of different ways to go about that. But certainly you want to address the body from head to toe. And you hear, you've heard my theme already, fix the toxicity, fix the diet, fix the pathogens. But consider iodine for that. Okay. I would not recommend turpentine, not easy on your stomach if you are sensitive. Okay. Um. Black on the hull and clove for parasites, yes. Wormwood for parasites too. I, I'm gonna stick with the herbs for parasites and para one and para two from Cellcor because they're fantastic. And I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna stock turpentine. I'm gonna, the herbs work really, really well. If you have sudden tartar plaque buildup in your teeth, does that mean you have placking of arteries as well? Potentially. So um, you got to fix the biochemistry of your blood that's causing the plaque buildup. Um, there's a lot of questions here. Do you agree that, this is a good question, do you agree that cod liver oil turns rancid in the body when, when oxygenation? Okay, here's the deal with oils, including fish oil is that when the oil is exposed to air, you have three days and then it's rancid. And when you consume rancid oil, you're giving yourself cancer and inflammation. So even back in the 50s and 40s, there was a study done on lab rats with wheat germ oil and they were, they were giving the lab rats oil from a big canister and they just poured it and the animals would eat it and they got cancer. And the headline said, wheat germ oil causes cancer. That's not a true statement. It was rancid wheat germ oil causes cancer. So rancid any oil causes cancer. So the Minnesota coronary study done in the 70s, they had people in mental health homes or some kind of state funded controlled homes. They removed the animal fat and protein which are very stable for a long period of time. And they replaced it with uh, plant oils and uh, the LDL went down and the death rates went up. So plant oils, not good. Okay. Um, how do, um, so how do white bum sticky bowel movement? There's something in your intestines. You probably have fungus in your intestines. So if it started six months ago, you got something growing inside your body, creating biofilm. So if you have to wipe your butt multiple times and it's sticky, that's biofilm. So I mentioned earlier how to get rid of biofilm with different enzymes and then take antimicrobials, do an antimicrobial type diet, no sugar, no dairy. So, you know, I've, I've repeated myself many times here regarding the same sort of conditions. And um, that's the pattern you know, there's details within that, right? We carry 
five, 600 different products in my office, but I've, I'm, I'm show, I've shown you multiple times the patterns. You got organisms, you got to detox, you got to do low carb, uh, sort of keto diet for some people, keto, but definitely low carb. And that covers a lot of territory right there. And then you got to feed the organs. I'm, I'm telling you what's on here. And then you feed the organs in different ways. So when I'm showing you this graphic about feeding the organs, um, most of the products I carry are for this. So there's hundreds and hundreds of products that fit this category here. And then I have about 15 to 20 for this. And I have about 15 to 20 for this. But I have hundreds of products for this, feeding the organs to get rid of symptoms. And most of the nutritional supplement industry is only effect, is only trying to fix this up right here. So, um, and that's why you, you can have doctors go on and on about all the complications of feeding organs and adrenal support and thyroid support and iodine and um, liver cleansing liver. I mean, there's, it just goes on and on about the complexities that occur here. But if you don't address the simplicities of this and this, then you'll never get out of this circle. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, you know what? I got to go. <laughs> it's uh, past 7.15. I've had um, a great day. I need to go shopping for food. I'm going to get a bunch of meat. And um, I appreciate all the questions. And I thank you for watching. And... Um, if, and so I'm, I need to use YouTube as my platform to uh, advertise or market for my office. So I'm going to repeat myself. If you want to be a patient, if you need advice, if you're confused, and if you want to have direction regarding detox or, um, you know, killing bugs, we have on our website uh, surveys. One is called the lactic acidosis quiz. The other one's called the follow the physiology quiz. And, and you can fill those out and send it to us. We use that um, to determine where you, where you fit with these three circles. And so um, we're not going to answer you directly, though, unless you're a patient, of course. But when you fill that survey out, you start to, you're starting to get an idea like where you fit. You can see this, the title headings and how many times you answer the question yes versus no. So with the bacterial column, if you have a bunch of yeses, and then the viral column, a bunch of yeses, and the toxicity column, a bunch of no's, then you know you're not so toxic for this little circle, but you got you have to address the pathogens here. So, oh, look, I got $2 from Psy KT. Can you talk about pituitary gland swelling? Yes, I just had somebody today, his pituitary gland is now lo no longer swollen, we fixed it. And when you get the swelling, the symptoms occur here and here, mostly on the left side, not so much on the right. So in my 20 years of dealing with this, um, I've only seen it on the right side maybe five or 10 times, but on the left side all the time. And so when the pituitary is angry, the nerves that refer to the, the skin is, goes to here into the, this part of the brain. There are solutions for it. There's two in particular that I really like. They're both from standard process, of course. The first one is called pituitrophin, and the second one is called e-manganese. E-manganese, not magnesium. So e-manganese. Those are like home runs. So anytime anybody's ever got pain here, pituitrophin e-manganese. Like, and then it fixes the worst heartburn and the worst acid reflux. Okay. Thanks for the two bucks. Um, okay. So, uh, I gotta go, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, I appreciate your questions and I'll keep posting and, uh, give me a thumbs up and then, a sh and then share it and make sure you're subscribed and you hit the bell for notifications. Oh, and if you're a doctor, by the way, and you want to learn about what we do October 26th here in this office in Ann Arbor, I'm giving a seminar. So go to the website, powernutritionpractice.com. And I'm teaching the muscle testing. I'm teaching all the philosophy behind this and the application. And also a little bit on how to run a nutrition practice. 
And then go to goodfat.bar and buy some good fat bars. Go to heritageglandulars.com and uh, get the uh, multi-glandular to feed your glands. Okay, bye.